Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for coming to this service of thanksgiving for the life of Tommy Sterrett. We gather together this afternoon to give thanks to God for Tommy's life, to remember Tommy with thanksgiving in our hearts, and also to hear of the hope that was Tommy's, because Tommy was a Christian. And so death for him was not a dead end. For Tommy to live was Christ and to die is great gain. When we speak of this being a service of thanksgiving, we really mean this. We want this to be a time of thanksgiving because Tommy was blessed with a long, full, and fruitful life. 98 years of God's sustaining grace, faithful provision, and steadfast care. When we reflect on Tommy's life, there's so much to be thankful for. Tommy loved and appreciated his family. He was a faithful husband for 70 years to Betty, who already has gone home to be with the Lord last year. He was a father to the late Paul, to Carol and David, a father-in-law to David, and to his son David's late wife, Nicola. A grandfather to Joanne and Mark, grandfather-in-law to Connor and Amy, great-grandfather to Grace, Joshua, and Zoe. I know you know this, but he loved you all and spoke of you all with such affection. As well as loving his family, Tommy loved this church family, his great Vic family. He became a member of this church on the 13th of May, 1945, and I looked this up earlier. That means he was a member for over 79 years. I had to look it up because I could not do the math. The stories of his days as a campaigner chief are legendary. I've heard about the salute, the angel delight, the porridge. It sounds like he had quite a legacy, or he has left quite a legacy for so many. He was involved in youth ministry, in the choir, he served as a deacon here in the church, and uh, he really did love this fellowship. Tommy will be missed, on, on, and on behalf of my own wife, Lindsay, and I, and our whole church family here at Great Vic, we wish you all, uh, as a family, our sincere condolences and our deep love and sympathy at this time. We grieve today. Death is an enemy but we do not grieve as those who have no hope because that enemy death has been defeated by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Though Tommy is absent from the body that we led to rest earlier today out at Bally Lesson Cemetery, we know that Tommy is present with the Lord. Not in that body anymore, he's more alive than ever. At a time of real grief, the author of the book of Lamentations wrote of his pain and grief, but in the midst of that darkness, he reminded himself of the hope that was his because of the Lord. In Lamentations 3, 21 and 23, the author says, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Tommy was loved with an everlasting love. He enjoyed those mercies that were new every morning, and he loved to sing of God's great faithfulness. Our first hymn is Loved with Everlasting Love. This is a hymn that Tommy quoted to me often. He absolutely loved it. And it is a beautiful hymn, for it reflects that steadfast love that Tommy enjoyed and that anyone who trusts in Christ knows and enjoys for themselves. Let's stand together, if you're able, and we will sing Loved with Everlasting Love.
seated. One of our church members here and one of Tommy's long-standing friends, Brian Dorman, is going to come and lead us in prayer. Thanks, Brian. So if we can pray together to our God. O oh God, we come before you just now to give thanks for Tommy's life and to ask for help and comfort for David and Carol and their family and for Tommy's son, David. We are so glad today that Tommy knew Christ as his Saviour and Lord, and that now he is in the presence of you, his Saviour and Lord. And we thank you for his strong testimony, his love of the Scripture, his involvement here in the church at Great Vic, in Sunday school, children meeting, the choir, the campaigners, and as a deacon, and for many, many years supported by his loving wife, Betty. And we remember Tommy as a hard worker and a good servant of Jesus Christ. And we want to pray, Heavenly Father, for Tommy's son, David, and just thank you that he has been able to spend time with his dad recently. Help David through these difficult days and may he know your presence in his great loss. And we pray for Carl and her husband David, their family and the wider family circle. And we know that these last months haven't been easy for Carl, but you have given strength and we know that you will sustain them all in the days ahead as they keep focus on you. We pray that the words of the hymn that Tommy often sang when one visited him as he talked about heaven will be true for us all. We'll all be there. Thank you that all who trust in Christ as Saviour can have this assurance. Heavenly Father, by your Holy Spirit, be with us now in the rest of our service, for we ask all in the name of your precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Now, Tommy's granddaughter, Joanne, and great-granddaughter, Grace, are going to come and read for us from Psalm 46 and John 14. After the readings, Tommy's daughter, Carol, will come and bring a family tribute. I do think my granddaughter would be horrified that I'm using a mobile phone <laughs> and not an actual Bible. But, and I shouldn't add lib, should I? But um, I also, when we were singing that first hymn, I could hear harmonies, and my granddad would have loved that. He loved singing. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. 
God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Forgive some of this, it'll be repetition. Thomas John Rice, which we discovered was also one of his names, Sterrett, Known as Tommy, was born on the 2nd of March, 1926, to Minnie and Charlie Sturrott, who lived on the Shankill Road. He had a, a sister and a brother. Dad was the eldest. Unfortunately, his brother and his sister deceased some time ago. Dad worked as a sawyer in a builder's yard, and many years ago, due to an accident, he lost fingers on his right hand. From then on, Tommy was known around work, the Shankill Road, and later at Great Vic, as the man with only two fingers. Dad's life changed on the 11th of February, 1945. When he became a Christian, he got baptised and he joined Great Victoria Street Baptist, where he remained a member, and he was number two on the members list for almost 80 years. At youth fellowship and Bible class, Dad met Mum, Betty, and after, maybe it was a long courtship, I'm not sure, but a few years, they got married on the 24th of March, 1953. They were blessed last year to celebrate 70 years together. Sadly, shortly after that, Mum passed away. Dad loved his family. He loved Mum very dearly. He was blessed with three children, my brothers Paul and David, and of course the jewel and the cry. (laughs) His son-in-law David Crummy, my brother David's late wife Nicola, as was mentioned our two grandchildren, his two grandchildren, Joanne who's married to Connor and Mark who's married to Amy. And he was really, really blessed. He has three great-grandchildren, Grace, Joshua, and Zoe. Lots of special memories and happy times with them all. And watching especially Grace, Joshua, and Zoe growing up. Dad was ill last year, and one of his grandchildren wrote, I was making out a little tribute at this time, and one of his grandchildren wrote, It was amazing to watch what a man of faith he is and the example he has shown over the years. That just summed up Dad. He loved the Lord and he served faithfully in church ministry. He was a leader of the Junior CE, a leader in campaigners, and many of you here know about campaigners, know the salute, So they know that Dad's salute was with two fingers, and the young boys tried to emulate this. 
He served as a deacon. He was also known that he had a very firm handshake with his right hand. He sang in the church choir and in the Newton Breda male voice choir. He loved singing. He loved going out with the choir, the Newton Breda choir, to take meetings and being able to use testimony sometimes. They all took their turns. Unfortunately, due to Ill health reasons, he was unable to attend church often, but he did occasionally attend a few Tuesday morning friendship hour meetings, and he thoroughly enjoyed the fellowship and the chat. He also really enjoyed reading the Great Vic Bulletin that used to be sent out by Ruth and Gillian. He also listened sometimes to the recordings of the church service, if I could get it on my phone. He always remained faithful in prayer, and he always wanted to stay connected to Great Vic and to hear what was happening in the church and how it was growing. For those in Great Vic perhaps received Ruth Rickerby sent lovely, thoughtful, kind words that she shared about Dad on the church group app. Thank you so much to those who visited with Dad, especially whenever I was away, maybe in Scotland, visiting the family. Thank you to Brian and Maura, Jimmy and Clifford, Steve and Simon, and there's many others. Dad so enjoyed these visits and chatting about the scriptures. He loved the scriptures. He loved hearing about the church life and loved hearing how it was growing under your ministry, Steve. And then later on, Simon. Dad was able to live in his own home with the assistance of carers who were very good. And also, I suppose, I helped out caring for him too. He had a fall on the 24th of July and he was admitted to a and &E at the Royal Hospital. He was then transferred to Craigie Nursing Home, where he did receive good care. He was really blessed to have Noel Bailey, a church member, also there. Noel was only a few rooms away from him. They enjoyed times of fellowship and singing together right to the end. I think Noel was in opposition of a choir of the Newton Breda, but they enjoyed the times together. And thank you so much, Noel, for popping in and looking after Dad, popping into his room. Sunday, the 1st of September, I was very blessed to be with Dad all day. And I was privileged to be by his side when he passed away peacefully. Dad was faithful to his Saviour, and I have no doubts now that he is singing in the heavenly choir, reunited with Mum, who he missed so much, and they're now together. We truly have been blessed as a family to have had Dad with us for so long and for the example he has shown. So forgive me, I just want to make this wee quote again because obviously it has changed a little. Amazing to watch what a man of faith he was and the example he had shown over the years. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne and Grace and Carl for that very fitting tribute to your dad. Well, we're going to sing again this lovely hymn, How Great Thou Art. Tommy loved to sing, and this was one of the hymns that he particularly enjoyed. So please, if you're able, stand with me and we'll sing How Great Thou Art.
first time that I visited Tommy, we spent some time getting to know each other, I think. I was sussing him out and he was sussing me out. In the midst of asking Tommy about his life, I asked him what he worked at throughout his life. And he just shot out that right hand with what, what I thought was three fingers, but it's two fingers and, and maybe the thumb can count. And he just said, guess. And I realized this was a character in front of me. And they said I was a saw man. And as Carol has said, that didn't hold him back from having the firmest handshake of anyone I knew. I had lovely visits with Tommy over the last seven and a half years of being his pastor. Those visits were always so positive and hopeful despite the different challenges that came with racking up so many birthdays. I remember sitting and discussing many things with Tommy about the Word and about the Lord, about our salvation. And I remember often coming out tired, not because of the intensity of the theological conversation, but because of the heat <laughs> of the living room. I sometimes went out and nearly passed out because of how warm it was. Sometimes we would agree on certain, er, certain areas of theology and sometimes we would disagree. And I remember once Tommy said to me, well, Steve, on this matter, I think we'll have to agree to disagree. He was a very gracious man. He loved the Lord. He loved God's word. He loved the church. And though we may not have thought the same thing about everything with respect to how church should be, we had this lovely kinship because we both love the Lord. And we could see that in one another. Tommy was an old school gentleman. And he loved the Psalms. He drew great comfort from Psalm 46, especially when Betty died, to the extent that this was the passage we focused on at Betty's service of Thanksgiving last year. And having read this Psalm with Tommy often, and knowing how much comfort he drew from it through the different trials he went through in his life, I thought it would be fitting today to return again to this 46th Psalm. This Psalm that Tommy loved so much, and I want in our reflections on it to see why perhaps it meant so much to him. And I hope that today as we reflect on the truths of this Psalm, that you, Carol, and David, and the whole family circle, I trust that you'll receive great comfort, as we all do, from these words. I want to share three truths about God from this psalm that I know Tommy loved and appreciated. Truth number one, God is for his people, a strong, stabilizing fortress when everything else in our lives feels like it's falling apart. Verse one, God is our refuge and strength. These are precious words. I read an article in a newspaper recently that was fascinating. It was about underground nuclear bomb shelters in the UK. You know, there's over 250 of them dotted across the UK. There are some in Northern Ireland. Used to be one in Ballymena. I don't think it's running anymore. Many of them were built during the Cold War, and the whole idea was if there was a serious bomb attack, people could run down into the stronghold, the, the shelter, and it would be a place of shelter and security until the troubles of the storm or the uh, storm through the bombs had passed. Well, the psalmist here, right at the beginning of this psalm, reminds himself that this is who God is for him, and this is who God is for any child of God our refuge, and our strength. That means a place of shelter for us and a place of security for us when the troubles of life threaten to undo us. But notice the psalmist does not just recognize that God is a protective force around us, a protective personal God around us, but he is a God who is with us. His presence is with us in the shelter. The psalmist speaks of the Lord as a very present help 
in trouble. There is so much sweetness in this truth. God is with his people to help them in their afflictions. And notice he's not just a present help in trouble, but a very present help in trouble. Then the logical inference is drawn from this in verse 2. Therefore, if God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, these poetic word pictures are vivid the earth falling out of its orbit, mountains tumbling into the sea, causing tsunamis so that the waves roar like a lion. This is poetic imagery to speak of just hard times in life. The psalmist is saying, if all chaos is breaking out in your life to the point where you feel like your world is falling apart, there's something steady for you to hope in. And that's the Lord. God is our refuge and strength. In over 98 years, Tommy must have seen a lot of ups and downs in life. Lived through the Second World War, witnessed plenty of other wars going through the world. He experienced such trials in life when his son Paul passed away. Tommy proved the truth of these words in his life. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. David and Carl, family circle, that is who God is for you today if you will run to him. Tommy would want me to keep asking this question. Do you know God as your refuge and strength today? The second truth that we see in this psalm about God that Tommy loved was this. God is not just a stabilizing force for us when everything feels like it's falling apart. God is also, for us, his people, a sovereign king who can never be overthrown. Verse 4, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The picture in the psalm changes from the chaotic water that is out of control to channeled water that is tame and serving God's purposes. The picture is of a city that is being stormed by enemies, but God is in the midst of the city, and so it cannot fall. And because of this reality, because God is in the midst of the city, God is in the midst of his people's lives, God's people can enjoy a deep sense of peace and security, the peace and security that every single human being who has ever existed in the universe longs for. In verse 6, we're told of certain influences that seek to make God's people afraid. Nations raging. Intimidation is applied. God speaks. And the earth melts. It's a picture of God quelling the swell of his enemies, stilling the storms of anxiety and fear in his people's hearts. And then in verse 7 we read, The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I've said this before, but it's precious. This little title, The God of Jacob, is a beautiful title that occurs six times in the Psalms. And in every occurrence, it speaks of the protective care of God for the undeserving. I wonder, do you feel intimidated by things around you in your life at the moment? God can minister peace 
to your restless heart because he is the God of peace. And again, David and Carol and the Sterrett family circle, these, these truths are precious. We can draw such comfort from promises like what we read in Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me, Lord. Tommy knew God in this way. Do you know this God in this way? Because it is precious to know God in this way. You and I know there is so much in this world that is unstable. We put our hopes in lots of things. Trying to earn enough money to be able to have food to eat, and to provide for ourselves and our families. We, we have relationships in our lives that we look to for peace and security. But we all go through times where we recognize the inherent instability of everything around us. But God is the opposite of instability. He is an unchanging rock who is stable, strong, a fortress, you can stand on this God and know he will never, ever let you down. And I mean when I say stand on him as a fortress. And again, Tommy proved this truth throughout his life. In all the changes, in all the ups and downs. Think of how much change Tommy saw in his life over 98 years. Think of just the technological revolution of the past 25 years. I know he wasn't a man given to internet and emailing, but still. But in all that change, and some of that change can make us anxious, Tommy came to know the unchanging one. And that was his rock of stability throughout life. And oh, it's the best thing in the world to know the stability in your own life. You know, some people think because you're a pastor, you have to get up and say these things at a funeral. I'm not just saying these things. These things are life. They're true. They're my life. They were Tommy's life. It's real. God is our refuge, our strength. Even when this life ends and this life gives way, God doesn't give way. It's our hope. It's incredible. So, God in this psalm is for his people, a strong, stabilizing fortress when everything feels like it's falling apart. He is for his people, a sovereign king who dwells with his people and who cannot be overthrown. And thirdly and finally, in verses 8 to 11, we see that God is with his people as a strong defender when we feel like we're under attack. In verses 8 and 9, we're given a vision of God bringing an end to all that shatters his people's peace. It's a picture of God as a mighty warrior fighting to liberate his people from all that troubles them. And in the midst of this part of this vision of our great God, in verse 10, we read these precious words, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God will be exalted by his protective care for his people that he demonstrates. He will be exalted when he demonstrates his just judgment on all opponents of true peace. Sometimes in the frantic pace of life, we need to find ways to be still for a moment. Carl, I know particularly for you, the past few months have just been frenetic. Here, Psalm 4610 invites you and all of us who will heed these words to in the midst of all that activity, to just be still and to remember that the Lord is God. Be still and know that I am God. And when he says, I will be exalted, he's saying, my purposes will not fail. This psalm invites us to be still 
and to see in the Lord a rock of stability and security, a fountain of peace. Why would you not come to this incredible God? Stability, protection, security, all found in Him. Who wouldn't want that? And then the refrain comes again at the end of the psalm, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Tommy knew God in this way. Do you know God in this way? How can we come to know this almighty God in this way? Well, this brings us to our second reading that Grace read for us earlier. John 14. Jesus said that the only way we can come to know God, the Father, as our rock, our refuge, our defender, our king, the only way we can come to know him is by trusting in Jesus Christ. We come to know God as our fortress when we repent from our sin and turn to Jesus Christ, who is called the cornerstone. We come to know God as our sovereign king when we trust in Jesus Christ, the king of kings, who promises to be with us always. We come to know God as our strong defender when we trust in Jesus, the one who can protect us from the worst enemies of sin, hell, and death. In John 14, Jesus said he was going to go through death and die for the sins of his people so that he could open the way for his people to enter the Father's house. Jesus calls heaven the Father's house or the Father's home in John 14. And I find this touching because in Tommy's last days, he often spoke of wanting to go home. Those caring for him thought that he was actually saying he wanted to go back to his home in 122 Graystown Avenue. He said, oh, he wants to get home. But Tommy was not talking about Graystown Avenue. He was looking to that better home, the home of righteousness that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God, the home of true righteousness and peace. In that text, in John 14, verse 3, Jesus said at just the right time he would come to take his people to be with him so that where he was, his people would be. Because that's where heaven is, where Jesus is. Jesus said, I'll come and take you to, to myself so that you may be where I am. Isn't it amazing to think that on Sunday past, Jesus did this for Tommy. This past Sunday, Jesus came to Tommy in a sense saying, I've been sent by the Father to bring you safely home. And Tommy would want everyone here to know that he was a sinner saved by grace. He found in Jesus a treasure, all divine, matchless grace made the treasure of Christ Tommy's. He would want to say to everyone here, especially his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, in Jesus there's a savior, there's a friend who will never fail you. Trust him, turn to him. This is your place of stability in all the, all the instability of life. This is the place of life, even in death. Because you see, when you turn to Jesus, Jesus gives you new life. It's called being born again. And Jesus said the life that he gives to his people will never die. Even though you may physically die, the life Jesus gives can never die. And so Jesus said that even though his people may die, they live. And he is the one who invites us to come to him saying, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's what you need more than anything else in the world, the rest that Jesus can give you. That's what I need more than anything else in the world.
That's what Tommy needed more than anything else in the world. He knew that rest. He enjoyed that rest. He would want everyone here to know and enjoy that rest. Because you see, Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and life to the full. And that life is found in turning to Christ in repentance and faith. And then you have nothing to fear about death. It's the best thing of all. Nothing to fear. Because Jesus will shepherd you safely through and bring you home. But if you do not have Jesus, you do not have that assurance. Why would you not turn to this great Savior and this great hope? In our closing hymn, we are singing these lovely words. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, what a glorious day that will be. Jesus has taken Tommy by the hand, led him home to himself. And so these are fitting words for us to sing. But first, let me just pray, and then we'll stand and sing together. Father, what a delight to reflect on the hope that is found in Psalm 46, knowing you, as our strong place of stability when all around is unstable, knowing you as the king who dwells in our midst and you will not be moved, never overthrown, knowing you as our God who defends us whenever we feel like we're being attacked or we're anxious or afraid. O oh Lord, in you there is hope and peace and life and Jesus said that that life was found by turning to him. No one can come to the Father except through him. Thank you that that reality was Tommy's, that he knew the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And he knew that hope and life and peace that there is in following Jesus. It's such a joy to know you, Lord. And we thank you today that though we grieve and see that awful enemy of death, we see the greater conqueror, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has defeated death. He's loved us. He's freed us from our sins by his blood. And now because he lives, we can live what hope we have. And we thank you for that sure and certain hope that can never be shaken, no matter how much life shakes us. You are our unshakable hope, our refuge and strength our very present help in trouble. Thank you, Father, for being this for us in Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, let's stand together and sing of that glorious day.
let's remain standing as we close our time in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together this afternoon to give thanks to you for the life of Tommy Sterrett. Lord, we thank you for all that we have been able to together remember of him. And Lord, we thank you that we can also remember your saving work in his life. Lord, we thank you for his example of putting his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray that even as we hear of his example of faith in you, that would spur us on to, like Tommy, run the race faithfully to the end when we can look forward to that day which Tommy himself knows when we too will see our Saviour face to face. Lord, we thank you for this hope in amongst our grief even now. And so we hold fast to that and we give you thanks through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. Uh, and as you sit, uh, let me just take this opportunity to pass on behalf of all of Tommy's family. Uh, uh, thank you so much for coming to join us uh, this afternoon uh, as we've remembered uh, Tommy. They are, I really appreciate all of your support and care and prayers that have been offered, uh, particularly over the recent uh, weeks. And they'd also like to invite you now just to join us. Uh, people have been busy at the back there. There are some refreshments. So our formal time is over, but it is so good now to just be able to talk together. So do take this opportunity to come and greet the family if you haven't already. And do uh, stick around and, uh, and continue to remember uh, Tommy um, over some refreshments now too. Thank you so much for coming.